But Israel's parents are holding on to hope, waiting to hear this little voice once again. Oh my God, that is so sad. But in fact, physicians have declared two-year-old Israel Stinson brain dead. The toddler's parents insist he's alive. They posted this home video on YouTube claiming it proves their point. Israel, baby, mommy's here. I'm going to tickle you one more time. Do it one more time. Do it one more time, Alexandra. There you go. There yes, you go. Yes, yes, yes. Israel. You seen it? Yeah, it's amazing, and his huh? blood pressure is going up. Oh, you can hear mommy <laughs> and you can feel mommy, huh? Israel, you got to stop fooling everybody. How long is it going to take, huh? <laughs> I know you're going to come out of this, baby. Wow. Back with Anahita and Leo. Joining us via Skype, Gina Loudon, host America Trends on U2 America. She is a pro-life advocate. Anahita, we have been here before, you and I, whether it's Jahai, what's Jahai's last Jahai name? McGrath. Jahai McGrath. Or Bobby Christina Brown. I, I Listen, I went over and over this. When somebody's brain is gone, it is gone. Why is it different than if I pull the heart and lung out and just had it as a physiological prep. Why do people yeah. not understand this is a prep just like that? Well, for two reasons. I think people want to believe in miracles. And then when you look at videos like that, where the child or the individual reacts to that's touch, a, people believe a, it's the brain. It's not. But it's, it's not the brain. Reflexes. It's a reflex. It's, re it's an autonomic nervous yeah. system. It's the body that is disconnected from a brain that is dead. A pediatric specialist who works at the California hospital where Israel is being treated, talk to a local CNN affiliate. Here it is. Mm -hmm. It can look like twitches, it can look like muscle contractions, but unfortunately those are just reflexes. They're not coming from the brain because in brain death there's a cease of function and unfortunately it's irreversible. It's very sad. And it's very sad, Leo, it's irreversible. What, what, what bothers me is, this: if I were working on that case, I would see my job as getting that pay, those parents to the place of acceptance. Them hanging on to something that will never happen, as it never happened in the history of mammalian biology, will never happen, has never happened in the history of humanity, to allow them to sit and suffer with that for God knows how long, it would be, I couldn't stand it. Well, look, Dr. Drew, I hate to disagree with you, but you're wrong. I, not <laughs> medically, not medically but legally, because that's why this family is in federal court. There are some states, and as a lawyer, I'm looking at this, there are some states that said, hey, as long as there's a heartbeat, that child's alive. So if for I, example, so New I Jersey. take the heart out and the lung out well, and put it in a jar, well, then we're fine? Well, I'm not saying, look. We're fine no, then, no, we're no, fine, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not, No, I'm not gonna challenge medically, but I'm saying legally, that's why that baby, that's why that baby is still in the capacity she's in right now, because a court has said, no, as long as, they're, as, long as she's had the heartbeat, they can, Pursue this, and Gina, that's in New right. Jersey, and that's the law. I want to get, Gina, get Gina. Gina, you tell me what's your opinion on this? Is is what is a life and what is not a life? I understand that there's legal protection of life. I'm all for that, but this is a physiology prep. Well, brain death, as I understand it, is uh, not a clinical diagnosis, but rather a medical opinion. And I understand they've had three of those, and this is a tremendously complicated situation. But Dr. Drew, this is a little bit personal for me. I actually adopted a little boy who had Down syndrome. He was on a feeding tube. He had failure to thrive. And they told me when I adopted him, I was signing a death certificate just so that he would have parents on his death certificate. Gina, and, Gina uh, I'm going to interrupt you. I have to interrupt you. That is fantastically different than somebody coming to you and say, this is a dead person. That is somebody who may, who's going to die in their opinion, as opposed to somebody who is dead. There is a the infinity the difference line. between those two states. Infinity. But the bottom line, but the bottom line Dr. Drew, and, and there are states that agree, and as your lawyer pointed out, um, it, it, the bottom line is it should be up to the parents. It is not up to the, to the state to decide I, you know what, what I, I'm, necessarily true have, well, but I'm sympathetic you, to you that. Yeah, I, I'm sympathetic. Yeah, to that. And, but here's, but I, I, those things. The, uh, I like the way Gina framed this. It's about it, parenting rights, right? It's parenting rights yeah. and the law. Okay. I mean, you cannot, your medical experience and expertise cannot trump the law. The law is very I, clear. I, I listen, but but here's my problem. Okay. It, it, you you kind of missed it last time I stated it. The problem is getting these parents who are entitled to their parenting privileges. I, I believe in protecting those. But the job of the professionals should be to get them to the point of acceptance of managing reality on reality's terms. Otherwise, 
guys, what are we doing, guys? Are we going to spend all of the medical resources we have on brain preps? Is that what we're going to do? Making the assumption there's universal consensus on your opinion throughout this country. If so, then why does New Jersey allow this to happen? They, they, I'm not saying that there'll be universal opinion on what this is. I mean, brain death. Well, yeah, three doctors examined yeah. this child. They went to three different courts in California, state courts. All the courts agreed that the doctors used the right, right procedures. They followed the proper law. And they all determined that this poor child is brain dead. And I think that's the bottom line. Now, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see what this federal court does, because I think it will be groundbreaking if this court actually mandates this hospital and these doctors to perform these surgeries, to give him a feeding tube, to give this child medications. I but think that will be groundbreaking. So he can be transferred. So he right? can be, be transferred, transferred to New Jersey. I, I, like I, bet they allow it. I bet they I bet they I bet they Well, why not? Why would you allow? It's the law. I mean, I, I'm confused. I, well, I, well, I, no, the law says in New Jersey, let's be clear. Yep. The law says as long as there's a heartbeat, the child's alive. But they're so why trying are we to, because they're trying to get the court to tell these California doctors to perform the surgeries, give the medications so that the child can be transferred. And what's wrong with that? That's the what, what, what's the problem with that? Well, it's, 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 I hope it's not about money because let's face it, it sounds like money. It, it smells like it's about it, money. It, what I love what Leo's talking about, what's the universally tr universal <laughs> truth. He wants me to well, declare I, universal, I will tell universal, you universal you opinion of all doctors. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 in, in some level, listen. We are asked as physicians oh. to make decision making based on available resources every day. That's part of our responsibility is to make sure that we aren't aren't useless, wasting resources. No. How is this no. not wasting resources? See? But I understand. Yeah. But I understand. I want to protect the patient parent privilege. My goal would be to get the parents to deal with reality. This is not a cause benefit analysis. analysis. It, it, not for it me. Sounds like it. It, it, it. Every every medical decision has a cause parent medic a cost. Uh, Whatever the hell they are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm behaving like people that respond to Donald Trump now. See how that works? You'd be a good negotiator. So, but the, but the point is that, that I forget. Let me go to break. <laughs> I'll you think. Stopped, well, I got, your I got, got, you got me. You got me. I've never deal. seen that. We will hear from Israel's parents. They're locked, as we've heard, in a battle over the in the courts over the fate of their son. It's, I'm back with Anahita, Leo, and Gina. Gina, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, the people have to be helped along to get to understand. They've never seen this before. We, as physicians, see this thousands of times, what brain death is, what death is, and people don't want to accept it. But you're right. People do grieve differently, Dr. Drew. And this family is asking for two basic things, no major surgeries here. We're talking about putting in nutrition for the baby because they've given him no food. So he's virtually starving to death, which is not a pleasant way to die. I can never understand why that medical decision is ever made. And, uh, and, and to have him on a breathing tube. Those are minor things. The mother's asking to give nutrients to her child, maybe to give herself that time to grieve and get to the exact place you're talking about. But the bottom line is, Dr. Drew, this shouldn't be up to you and I. This should be up to the parents. Well, she's saying, Leo, it should be up to the parents what decisions are made. And, and not only that, it should be up to the law, which is the point you're making. Right, exactly. And I the law is the law. He should have the opportunity to go to New Jersey where these sorts of injuries, however you choose to define them, right. are allowed to be sustained. Hmm? Is that about right? Right, and there's no argument. The parent parental control and the fact that the law is the law in New Jersey, and they have the right. Well, I don't even know why we're arguing at this point. But Notwithstanding the medical evidence that you have portrayed. You, you're that, you're that's going with, with the law. I'm going with the law. with the law. Strictly with the law. But there's got to be an element of denial here. Just hearing these parents talk, an and it element. reminds me. Well, it's yeah, heartbreaking I to can, love denial. Right, and that's what I'm wondering. Are there not any services? Are there not any um, mental health professionals that you're participate making my point. in no, these decisions? You're making decisions? my point. No, hold on. But okay. you're making my point, which is it, w the job of the professional which should be to bring these poor people to the point where they're understanding reality, not have them burning through their life. They're going to dedicate their life to standing by the bed of somebody that's never going to be it's okay. Like you, the Bobby you, you Brown, guys, Bobby both of you guys are indicting every physician in New Jersey. They're, they must all be nuts no, there. No. Yes, you are, because apparently before they enacted that law in New Jersey, they talked to the medical profession there, and you guys are indicting every doctor in New Jersey. I, but it's I, never happened. That's, oh, that's no. my thing. It's I, never happened. I, the I, law I, is the law. But I doubt never physicians happens. were enthusiastic about that law in New Jersey. I doubt it. Because so, that, I, well, should every, now let's go back to that, what'd you call it, a cost benefit analysis? Yeah, the cost benefit <laughs> analysis. Should, should every dime of health care be spent on any people that are dead? Look I, look, I think that's an individual choice, okay? So who makes that choice? I don't know. But I'm not going to sit here and say that you and I have the right to tell that family, hey, pull the plug. Especially again. You do not have that right. We don't have that I right. Agree. I agree All with right. you. All right, next up.